and today we're going to talk about throwing on the wheel. So the first thing you need to do is get your clay prepared. So we do some special wedging for that and also weighing of our clay. For your first project, I want you to focus on making a smaller piece. We're going to focus on making a cup and we're going to start with just one pound of clay per ball that you're going to be using. So I'm going to cut off a bit of clay here. This is a new block of clay, so I don't have to do any pre-wedging to reincorporate it with its, itself. I will have to wedge it though before I use it on the wheel. First though, I'm going to measure my clay. This is the scale that we used, it's right here, and I want to measure out one pound sections of clay. So I'm just going to tear this apart and put it on here. That's just a little bit more. Okay, there's one pound of clay right here. Now before I throw, I want to start out, I would suggest three uh, sections of clay. That way if you mess one up, you just set it to the side and start again. For one class period, that should be plenty. I've never had anybody throw more than three. You might not even get to all three. And if you don't, that's okay. You can actually save it for the next time you're in. So here's another one. That's a pound. And let's see here, I might have gotten it just perfect. Oh, a little too much. Set that there. Perfect. So these are three one pound sections of clay. I'm going to wedge each one to prepare it now for the wheel. I'm going to do what's called a spiral wedge. So we have ram's head wedging that we I have already taught you, which is where you just go down with your heels like this over and over again until you end up with the snout and the horns of a ram. For spiral wedging, it's much trickier and it's harder to get the hang of. So if you want to just stick with the ram's head, you can. That is completely fine. But you do need to uh, wedge it constantly in the same direction. We're trying to get all of our particles and clay to go in the same spiral motion so that we can, when we put it on the wheel, it's already going in the right direction. It just makes everything work a lot smoother and it's easier to center and throw this. If you're doing a spiral wedge, what you do is, I'm gonna turn it around here. You actually, my one hand does all the work and the other hand picks it up as I wedge. So I'm really just wedging this bottom part right here into itself, but as I go, I'm creating a spiral. Now when I'm done, I'm gonna leave it like this and I'm going to shift it over to the left. So I'm gonna pick this up and shift it to the left with a spiral wedge, I end up with kind of a cone shape. I'm going to pound it down like this, and that's ready to go. Okay? So I'm going to do my other two, get them ready, get them nice and wedged. If you have new clay, you probably can get away with wedging like 15 times. If you have older clay that you've had to like reincorporate with itself, I would wedge it 30 times. Okay, notice again, I'm picking it up to the left. Always go towards the left. And that, and even if I do, I'm gonna do one with a ram's head. So you can see, if I'm doing ram's head, I'm wedging, and then I'm gonna roll it and put it over towards the left to make a flat bottom. So here I have my three pieces of clay all ready for the wheel. So now we're gonna transfer on over there and I'm gonna show you how to throw a cup. Okay, so here I have my wheel. I have my three pieces of clay already. I've gotten a bucket of water and I've gotten my bucket of water based on the color of the clay I'm using or the temperature. So I'm using high fire clay for my throwing. So I'm using the bucket that says high on it. If you're using low fire clay, which is what you'll all be using at the beginning, you will use either a bucket that has red clay in it or white clay. Try to choose one that matches what you're using. So to start, to get our clay to stick on the wheel, we want a dry wheel, but we're just putting a tiny bit of moisture on it barely any at all. Just a little bit of moisture and then we're going to take this and throw it down, make sure it's sticking. You're going to turn your wheel on over on the side and then the pedal is usually on the right hand side of the wheel. I try to get the wheel going at a certain speed and then I remove my foot from the pedal. It just makes it a lot easier to not be focusing on the starting and stopping and slowing and going faster with the pedal and I can just focus on my hand. Now I'm constantly using wet hands. 
but also clean hands. So I'll constantly be scraping my hands in the bucket and then re-getting getting them wet again. The first step is centering my piece on the wheel. So to do that, I do what's called wheel wedging, which is where I squeeze up to make it go up, and then I'm going to push down like this. Now when I push down, notice how my hands are almost karate chopping each other. And I just push down like this. My left hand is doing most of the work. This part of my hand right here is pushing against it. And then this part of my right hand is pushing down. So I'm pushing down and then I'm going to wedge up again. This is just getting all my particles kind of going in the same direction, like I had mentioned before with the wedging on the table. They're both really important. The more aligned that your particles are in your clay, the easier it will be to pull up without offsetting, offsetting your clay. For centering, I'm using this part of my hand to do all the work on my left hand. I'm pushing in so that my piece is no longer wobbly. When I look at it from the top, it should look like it's not even moving, okay? There should be no wobble to it. If there's even the slightest bit of wobble, it will be hard to throw an even pot, almost impossible, especially as a beginner. So I'm pushing it. I'm using this part of my right hand to push it down, and I'm using this part of my left hand to push it in until it's completely centered. I want to end up with a plateau like this, okay? That takes us to step number two, which is putting the hole in the center. I'm gonna use my middle finger. Now everybody does this differently. This is just how I was taught and how I learned. I'm gonna use my middle finger and I'm gonna go straight down in the center until it's about a quarter of an inch from the actual wheel itself. I don't wanna go all the way through because I do want my piece to have a bottom to it. So it's kind of a guessing game until you get uh, used to the feel of it, but I'm just gonna go straight down. I'm kind of pushing towards me just a tiny bit, but mostly I'm just going straight down. And I end up with both of these fingers in the hole, okay? Now, I think I'm about this far, but I can test that by stopping my wheel and using my needle tool and sticking it down in there and using my finger to kind of see I'm this far from the actual bottom. That's perfect, okay? Now that hole will naturally close itself as I compress the bottom, so there's no worries about that. And now I'm going to work on step three, which is opening the bottom of my bowl or cup. Now we're making a cup, so I want my bottom to be about this wide in diameter, and I'm gonna to try to make it somewhat flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my finger straight down like it was and keep it at the same level it is and just pull it towards me very slowly. So I'm going down like this and I'm using my finger. Notice how I'm always bracing my arms on my legs. While you're learning and getting stronger and like producing that muscle memory, bracing your arms is really, really important to keep everything from getting off center. So I'm just gonna pull my finger towards me. This hand is doing nothing. I could do this without this hand. I just like my hands to always be touching because I feel like they create a, kind of a steadiness to each other. They give each other support. That's just how I throw, okay? So I've opened up my bottom right here. And so that takes us to step four, which is to compress the bottom. So you can use, a, a lot of people use a sponge for this. I just use my fingers usually, but I'll show you with a sponge. I'm just gonna kind of bend it over, get it, get some moisture in it, but you don't want it to be dripping water. And I'm just gonna press down, and it's just pushing my particles of clay to, uh, against each other to make it a stronger floor. And the reason that's good is because if I don't, it'll when it dries, it'll create an S-curve if it's a weak bottom, okay? Now I keep knocking my piece off center. As you get better, you'll still be able to throw it, but you wanna be really careful not to do that as a beginner because it's hard to fix once you do it. All right, I'm gonna try to get that. Okay, so now we're ready to pull. We're gonna pull up our sides. My first pull, I always start with a knuckle pull, but you don't have to. Some people like to just start with fingers. You're basically, you need to pr uh, produce pressure on the inside 
that really just holds it in place and then you're actually scooping from the outside. So you're scooping and then you're pulling up and keeping your pressure on both sides even the whole way up, okay? So I'm gonna do this with a knuckle pull for my first one. Again, my hands are always touching each other and I'm at four o'clock. If this was a clock, one, two, three, four. That's just where I go. Try to, to do it on this side of your clock. Always on this side. Four or five o'clock are good places to start. So I'm just bringing them together and then pulling up and in. Try to avoid going out until you get used to it. If you try to make a bowl your first time, you'll probably end up with a plate. So we're gonna start by trying to make a cup and if we end up with a bowl, so be it. All right, for your first time until you get more used to it. So you're, you're attempting to go up and in. Okay, so I did my first pull with my knuckle. I can keep doing knuckle pulls if I want. I can pull with my fingers, which I'll show you. And I also like to pull with a wooden rib. So I'll show you with my fingers next, the next pull. Again, I'm scooping up the extra clay out here with these outside fingers. And I'm just using my inside fingers as support. So I'm gonna scoop. Now when I get to the top, a common mistake that people make is that they keep pinching until they get to the top and then beyond it. And what happens then is you end up with a really, really thin um, lip. And you don't want that. You want your lip to be the same thickness as the rest of your piece. So I kind of stop pushing when I get to the top and then just naturally keep the, my fingers where they are as I release. And that takes us to, so that was step five, was pinch pull. So we're pinching and pulling. In between pulling up, I'm not done pulling my um, piece yet. I actually do number six, which is, um, oh, I'm sorry. Number six is actually like pulling. So number, number five is to pinch. Six is to pull up. Seven is to compress my rim. So I create kind of a little bridge here with my fingers. I'm gonna go like this. So I'm this hand is really keeping it steady, but this hand is pushing down on my clay to compress my rim. Just like with the bottom, I wanna compress this part of the clay so it stays strong, okay? All right, I'm gonna do another pull. This time I'm gonna show you with my rib tool right here. So I'm, again, I'm using fingers on the inside and I'm bringing it in. Hold on. The rip tool is really nice because it's going to get rid of the extra clay you actually don't need on here. I'm going to push out. All right. There we go. So I basically made this in three pulls. As you're learning, it's going to take a lot more than that. Okay. So I'm going to compress my lid one more time. And then we're on to step eight. Okay, so step eight is to get rid of this extra clay down here so that we don't have to trim it all off. So I'm actually gonna slow my wheel down a bit. This tool right here is what I prefer for, getting, for doing that tap. I actually can put this so that it's in the shape of my piece and just go down gradually like this. And then once I've cut that in, now I can use it to kind of just slowly get rid of all my extra clay. I'm putting my scraps in my water bucket. Your water bucket is gonna be full of clay when you're done. You don't ever dump it down the drain, okay? The clay buckets are something that you actually leave out and then I take care of in the morning. I let the clay settle at the bottom so then I can actually pour the water down the drain, but then repurpose the clay as slip or to um, re-moisten some of the dried out clay. We recycle all the clay that hasn't been fired. If it's been bisque fired, we can't reuse it, but we can always reuse it if it has not. All right, so now we're on step number nine, which is where we try to remove any extra moisture. I've got a little bit of water pooled down inside of my cup and 
it's not so much now, but I can see some glistening water on the sides where if I need to kind of squeegee it off. So I'm going to start with the water at the bottom of the cup. I'm going to use any kind of sponge would work. I'm going to just go really slow and try to kind of just mop it up. You don't actually have to have your wheel moving for this, but I like to kind of compress my bottom one more time while I'm doing it. And then I'm going to squeegee it off the sides using my metal rib tool right here. This is the only thing a metal rib tool is good for on the wheel. Please don't ever use it to clean your wheel or to try and pull up. This actually can get really sharp. I've had it catch in play and it could cut your finger if your wheel is spinning and you're trying and it like goes past you. It can be really sharp, but I like it because it's flexible so I can bend it to the shape of my bowl as I turn slowly here and kind of squeegee off any extra moisture and smooth out the sides of my piece. Next, I'm going to kind of just round off my rim. This is optional, but I like to do this. And I just, I use my sponge for this. You can use a small chamois or a little piece of rag or a wet paper towel. But you want something that's wet and I'm just kind of curving it like this. And I'm going to go like that. I like this especially for cups and mugs because I feel like it makes it more, um, like it's a more comfortable thing to drink out of for people. All right, so now I have this completely finished. The 10th and final step is to remove it. Now that's just our final step for today because tomorrow when we come back and it's um, leather hard, we actually have to trim the bottom, which will be another video that you'll see. But to take it off the wheel, the secret is to make sure you have clean and dry hands. So I'm just going to clean my hands in here. You can use the sink if you want. I'm gonna dry them with the rag I have. And you would grab a wooden board from over under the wedging table. I'm just gonna use this right here. You want it close by because we're gonna cut it off, pick it up and transfer it over. So I'm gonna use this wire tool to cut. And then my hands are dry and clean so it's easy to grab it and transfer it over. I'm then going to put a bag over it, but I'm going to put the bag over it with the bag open towards the back of my locker. In an ideal world, it would just be dry enough the next day for me to trim it, but sometimes it takes two days like that. It's better that it takes two days for it to get leather hard than for it to completely dry out because if it's bone dry when you come back the next day and want to trim it, you will have to start all over. You can't add moisture to a piece that is bone dry. I mean, you can, but it will not work. <laughs> the way you want it to. So we want to dry it slowly to make sure we don't over dry it. And when we come back and we want to trim the bottom so that it looks really nice on the bottom, we have to wait for it to be leather hard. All right. Thank you so much. And I'm excited to see how you do on the wheel.